I am Dev Zaina. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about IEEE 802.11 protocol architecture, medium access control. This topic is present in the subject wireless networks. We are going to see the OSI layer, data link layer, MAC layer representation with the help of a small diagram. This is the OIC reference model. This OIC layer is having seven layers. They are physical layer, data link layer, network layer, transport layer, session layer, presentation layer, and application layer. In this, the layer two, that is the data link layer, is subdivided into two layers. They are medium access control layer and logical link control layer. MAC layer covers three functional areas. They are reliable data delivery, access control and security. Let us see the reliable data delivery. A wireless LAN using the IEEE 802.11 physical and MAC layers is subjected to unreliable noise, interference and other propagation effects results in loss of significant number of frames. This situation can be dealt with by reliability mechanisms at a higher layer such as TCP. For this purpose, IEEE 802.11 includes a frame exchange protocol. Now, just we see a small analogy related to the reliable data delivery. Just consider that you are having the information. You want to send the information to your post. So you are keeping the information in the envelope and you are sending. If the address to whom you are going to send the information is not present over the envelope means the data will not reach the destination. So you are writing your destination address then only the data that will be sent by you reaches the destination. This is called as the reliable data delivery analogy. The C frame exchange protocol. So station transmits data. Destination responds with acknowledgement that is ACK. If source does not receive ACK, it retransmits frame. To further enhance reliability, a four frame exchange may be used. And this is the function of the frame exchange protocol. Let us see a small analogy related to this frame exchange protocol. You are sending the information by a post. In the speed post or the register post, if you are sending the information means you are filling the acknowledgement form, then you are sending the information. As soon as the information reaches the destination, you receive the acknowledgement. If the acknowledgement is not being received by you means you check the post office whether the information is being sent or not. This is a small analogy related to the frame exchange protocol. Let us see four frame exchange method. Source issues request to send RTS. Destination responds with clear to send that is CTS. Source transmits data. Destination responds with ACK. These are the four steps 
has to be followed in four x four frame exchange method. Let us see a small analogy related to the four frame exchange method. Now consider two persons, person A and person B. Person A is having some information. Person A wants to send the information to person B. So person A is asking the person B that I'm having this information. I want to convey this information. Are you ready to receive this information in the form of RTS? As soon as this reaches the person B means person B responds to person A that, okay, I am able to receive the information, send the information to me. That is called a CTS. Now, person A sends the information to person B. As soon as the information reaches person B, the person B responds to person A in the form of a small acknowledgement. I have received the information to the person A. This is a small analogy related to the four frame exchange method. Let us see the four frame exchange with the help of a small diagram. Here we are having nodes B, C, D, E and F. The node C wants to convey the information to node D. So node C starts initiating the transmission in the form of RTS, sending RTS to node D. That is C initiates RTS to node D. This is indicated in the diagram here. Node B is not participating in this conversation. Just consider about that. The node B is not responding. It is indicated in red color. That is the node B is remaining quiet during this transmission from C to D. This is indicated in the diagram. Now, the focus is on node C, D and E range only. D node responds to C node with the help of CTS. That is clear to send messages being sent by the D to C. Here, node E is not participating in this conversation. It is indicated in the red color. Four frame exchange continuity. As soon as the CTS information received from the D node to C node, the data that is available in the C node is transferred to the D node. Successful data reception acknowledged using ACK. This is represented here. Here, as soon as the data is completely received by D node, D node repeats the C node in the terms of acknowledgement message. This is indicated here. Access control. IEEE 802.11 considered two types of MAC algorithm. They are distributed access protocols, centralized access protocols. End result for 802.11 is a MAC algorithm called DFWMAC. That is Distributed Foundation Wireless MAC. Let's see IEEE 802.11 protocol architecture. The physical layer comprises of 2.4 GHz frequency hopping spread spectrum. Data rate is 1 Mbps, 2 Mbps. 2.4 GHz direct sequence spread spectrum. Data rate 1 Mbps, 2 Mbps. 
infrared 1 mbps 2 mbps 5 gigahertz orthogonal fdm data rate 6, 9, 12, 18, 24, 36, 48, 54 Mbps 2.4 GHz direct sequence spread spectrum data rate 5.4 Mbps 11 Mbps then 2.4 GHz DSSS data rate 6, 9, 12, 18, 24, 36, 48, 54 Mbps out of this IEEE 802.11 uses the first three then IEEE 802.11b IEEE 802.11b IEEE 802.11g the medium access layer is having two divisions one is distributed coordination function DCF and the another one is point coordination function PCF then the third layer is logical link control the contention free service is performed by point coordination function present in the MAC layer contention service is performed by distributed coordination function in the MAC layer this is the protocol architecture of IEEE 802.11 let us see distribution coordination function DCF. DCF makes use of simple CSMA that is carrier sense multiple access algorithm. If a station has MAC frame to transmit, it listens to the medium. If the medium is idle, station may transmit. Otherwise, it must wait until current transmission is complete. DCF does not include a collision deduction function. To ensure smooth and fair functioning of this algorithm, DCF includes a set of delays that amounts to a priority scheme. Let us consider a single delay known as an interframe space that is IFS. Three different IFS that is interframe space values. SIFS that is short interframe space. The shortest IFS used for immediate response actions. PIFS that is point coordination function IFS. A mid length IFS used by centralized controller in the PCF scheme. Then DIFS that is distributed coordination function IFS. This is the longest IFS used as a minimum delay for asynchronous frames. To see the IFS that is interframe space usage. First is SIFS. This SIFS is used for acknowledgement that is CCK clear to send CTS pull response. PIFS. This is used by centralized controller in issuing pulls. Takes precedence over normal contention traffic. DIFS used for all ordinary asynchronous traffic. Nation function PCF. It is an alternative access method implemented on the top of DCF that is distributed coordination function. The operation consists of pooling by the centralized pooling master that is point coordinator. The point coordinator makes use of PIFS that is point coordination interframe space when issuing poles because PIFS is smaller than DIFS. The point coordinator can cheese the medium and lock out all asynchronous traffic while it issues pools and receives responses. Contention free medium access that is fixed assignment strategies we are going to discuss. Collisions can be avoided by ensuring that each node can use its allocated resources exclusively. 
Fixed assignment strategies are inefficient. It is impossible to reallocate slots belonging to one device to other devices if not needed every time. Examples of fixed assignment strategies are FDME, TDME, CDME. FDME. The frequency band is divided into several small frequency bands. TDME. Multiple devices use the same frequency band. It relies on periodic time windows. A time schedule indicates which node may transmit data during a certain slot. CDME. Co-division multiple access. Simultaneous access of the wireless medium are supported using different codes. Dynamic assignment strategies. Dynamic assignment strategies includes polling based protocols, token ring, that is token passing, reservation based protocols, attention based medium access protocols. Nodes may initiate transmissions at the same time. Examples include a local protocol, slotted Aloha protocol. Aloha protocol uses acknowledgements to confirm the success of broadcast data transmission. It allows nodes to access the medium immediately. Slotted Aloha requires that a station may commence transmission only at predefined points in time. It increases the efficiency of Aloha. It introduces the need for synchronization among nodes. Contention free service, contention service. This is the representation of a MAC layer. We know that MAC layer performs two functions. One is a point coordination function, PCF, and the another one is a distribution, distributed coordination function, DCF. The Point coordination function PCF is responsible for contention free service. Similarly, distributed coordination function DCF is responsible for contention service. And this is indicated in this diagram. Thank you very much for listening this lecture. For further updates, kindly subscribe this channel. If you like this video means you can share this video to your friends.